I'm Alec Bean, and welcome back to a new show called Back to the Drawing Board, a, t a show where we will be rebuilding professional sports teams and seeing what they can do in the offseason. Today, we're looking at the New England Patriots. When looking at the Patriots, it's hard to tell what they really don't need. Um, they need everything <laughs> in um, short terms. Uh, they need a better offensive side of the ball. Um, their defense, although it was pretty banged up, it was pretty lackluster towards the end of the year. Um, however, when it is healthy, it is one of the better defenses. I will give them that. Um, as we saw in the first few weeks, they faced the Eagles, the Dolphins. They held their own. Um, with that said, we're going to take a dive into uh, their drafting scenarios. Now, newly hired head coach Gerard Mayo said that... Um, so that he believes Mac Jones has talent, thinks that he's a weapon, he thinks that he has all the tools to be an NFL quarterback. Um, however, they are in the evaluation phase. So with that said, um, we're gonna look at both um, scenarios where they keep Mac Jones or they move on. So first things first, let's go off if they were to keep Mac Jones. If they're keeping Mac Jones, there's no doubt in my mind that New England Patriots are taking Marvin Harrison Jr. He is one of the best wide receiver prospects of all time. Um, not much else needs to really be said. Back-to-back 1,200-yard -back receiving seasons, back-to-back -back years with 14 receiving touchdowns. I mean, it's safe to say that the 21-year-old receiver out of Ohio State, if there's no quarterback to be taken by the Patriots, he's a top three pick. He would spread out the offense for the Patriots. Mac Jones finally has his wide receiver one, and it would make a giant splash for the Patriots. Now, if they do decide to move on from Mac Jones, they will more than likely be taking the Heisman winner, Jaden Daniels, out of LSU. Um, dual threat quarterback, throw the deep ball, do it with his legs. Um, however, a dream scenario for the Patriots is seeing quarterback Drake May out of UNC follow them. He's got, he's shown what he can do on the field with not as highly noticed receivers as Jaden Daniels has with Malik Neighbors. Um, however, I do think that Jaden Daniels will end up as a New England Patriot as they are going to try and move on from past offensive schemes that they've run. Now in the second round, um, I have them taking an offensive lineman, uh, Graham Barton out of Duke. Um, the Patriots need help up front, even though they were de dealing with recurring injuries last year. They need all the help that they can get. And I believe that Graham Barton, who excels in the run game, would be a huge add for the Patriots as that run game was pretty pretty bad last year. Um, putting him at right tackle would give them that much more help on the edge to open up the run game as we see Ramondre Stevenson and Ezekiel Elliott take the carries in the backfield. And I'm not going to bore you going through every draft pick that the Patriots have. However, I do see them taking a running back in this draft. I don't think Ramondre Stevenson is really that guy anymore. Although he's shown flashes last season, he was really great his first couple years. However, I think it's hard for them to pass up on Blake Corum if he's there. I mean, the guy put up historical numbers last year at Michigan. He can do a little bit of everything. He's kind of like, he's a smaller Christian McCaffrey. I know it's a crazy and wild comparison. However, he catches the ball, he can run the ball, he's elusive. He can block, he can do whatever you need, even though he's on the smaller side. And I think that would ultimately help the Patriots spread out their offense. And I think that he is a good get for the Patriots to have in the draft. Now moving on to free agency. Having around $68 million in cap space is huge for first-year head coach Gerard Mayo. He said he wants to burn some money. Well, here's what they're going to do. They're going to re-sign Kyle Duggar. Four years, $60 million. Duggar is an all-pro caliber player. If he doesn't get banged up, he is that guy in New England on that defense. Um, they're going to re-sign Mike Onwenu. Uh, four years, $50 million. Great offensive lineman when he's healthy. You're going to re-sign Josh Uche. Two years, $14 million. Resign Hunter Henry for one year, $6 million. They're going to re-sign Ezekiel Elliott for two years, $9 million. Is that solid RB2, third down running back, uh, red zone running back kind of guy. Um, now those are the players the Patriots would love to see come back. That's a dream scenario for them. But this leaves them with $23 million in cap space. Now this can go one of three ways. Go wide receiver, go offensive lineman, or they can toughen up their corners. I 
I think Mike Evans is just out of reach for the Patriots. I don't think they can get him with that kind of with only twenty three million. Um, given the fact that he has double digit thousand yard seasons, he's definitely a Hall of Fame caliber wide receiver in my opinion. He's got a Super Bowl ring, great great player. However, Patriots, there's a guy in Cincinnati that they can't give him the money because they got to pay Jamar Chase, and that is T Higgins. I think this is the big splash the Patriots make in free agency, signing for a four-year, $92 million deal that would ultimately give either Mac Jones, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, whoever is playing quarterback for the Patriots, their wide receiver one, their deep ball, their red zone threat, whoever, whatever they want out of T. Higgins they're going to get. So with that, all the Patriots need is an offensive coordinator. I believe a reasonable candidate for this job is Lions wide receiver coach, Antoine Randall L. Now, seeing what he's done to develop receivers like Amon, Amon Ross A. Brown, Josh Reynolds, James Williams has had, a, has had a pretty decent year. I think that he's the perfect fit for New England. You know, seeing that Rams, no, Rams, sorry, the Lions offense really excel this past season, the past few seasons actually, under Dan Campbell, under their offensive schemes. I think that this guy is a perfect get for what the Patriots are trying to accomplish. So with that said, here's a recap of all the changes we made to the Patriots. I know it's a lot, but I think that with these changes, they can somehow find their way back into that playoff scenario. And that'll do it for episode one of Back to the Drawing Board. From the UCTV studio, I'm Alec Bean, and I'll see you next time.